Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. I have a review today, so this is a uh for tyke. <laughs> for tyke. I wonder if that's supposed to look a bit like a fluke from a distance. I'm not sure. But what I have here is a three and a half digit capacitor meter inductor LC meter. Two nanofarads to two hundred microfarads, so it won't read very small capacitors and 2 milliamperes to 20 milliamperes but this might actually be the range so 2 nanofarads might be the lowest range and obviously it means lower than that yeah quite probably so that's what we have I don't have an inductance meter so I got this from AliExpress I wanted to review it it's something else in my arsenal of equipment I guess yeah for testing things so let's have a look and let's see how good this is how useful is a little for tyke? Yeah. Okay, so we have it. Let's just take it out of the bag. Just remove that. Okay, so there it is. Comes with a couple of uh, test leads with crocodile clips on. And yeah, 2000 picofarads or 2 nanofarads is the lowest range, so it will read smaller capacitors than that. This model is the A6243L. It looks like this manuals for a few different versions. Yeah, like on some of the models, you have resistance as well. Okay, so I don't think we need to worry too much about the manual. This thing should be fairly intuitive, I would think. Yeah, it's a meter. Let's see what it does. Here is my old capacitor meter, one I've had for years. This only does capacitance, doesn't do inductance, but I can make some comparisons between the two. That'll give us some idea, I think. I mean, I've been very happy with this. I know some of you guys have bought these. So let's try. This meter doesn't come with batteries, so it's not a rechargeable type thing. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, this is a PP3. And I have one in my stash of batteries. I'll just make sure this is actually a good one. Yep, that's a new one, 9.76 volts. You can plug little inductors and capacitors into here. It shows you that. CXLX plus minus, interestingly. So, CXLX, CXLX, maximum 36 volts. So, obviously, you need to make sure your capacitors are discharged before using this one. I'm actually wondering if one side is for capacitors and one is inductors. I mean, they both mark the same, interestingly. But this has like two rows. It doesn't mention anything in the manual, but this is my old capacitance meter. And again, this has the same thing, to be quite honest. Either side. So let's assume they're both the same for now. Interesting positive is like the common. Okay. So we can use this as a comparison with this one. This has just the various ranges here. This has an off position at either end. So we'll put this onto the 2000 picofarads. We'll put this on the same. You'll see this one comes on. This one has a power switch. Okay. And it's a physical power switch. So when it's off, it doesn't drain the battery. Okay. This is a one nanofarad or 1000 picofarads. These are not close tolerance. I think they're five or 10%. So we can't expect it to be particularly accurate. Reads 1044. I'm gonna just swap the lead from this side to this side, just to see that it is actually the same. Yes, it reads the same, okay. Put this in my other capacitance meter, which is not calibrated in any way. So we can't say exactly which is the most accurate, but it's reading very similar. Okay. We'll try a smaller capacitor. These are one picofarad, which is probably the smallest you're likely to come across, to be honest. Unless there's some sort of specialized use. So we can just try again on my capacitance meter. Well, it doesn't actually want to read that. Or maybe it does, so it's not zeroed at the moment. So it's saying 39. There is a zero control on here, but it doesn't seem to zero properly. Maybe it's due to the long leads I have on this one. So from 36. 
changes to 37. So he's just reading it in a sense. Okay, what's this doing? So this one is reading just slightly negative. This is zero, it looks pretty well. Let's try our very small capacitor. Yes, one. Okay. That's good. We'll go to the other end of the range or towards it. So this is a 3,300 microfarads. Now you will know if you watch this channel at least that multimeters will read capacitors, most of them. But the larger the capacitors, the longer it takes to read. Yeah, it takes time. And they're not good at all with very small capacitors, which these were measuring. I will actually show you that. So this is a good reason to have a capacitance meter. We go to the highest range on here. And it reads it quickly. But this meter only goes up to, from what I can see, 200 microfarads is the maximum. So this is not going to read large capacitor, okay? So this should just go over. And it just gives a reading, but it doesn't really mean anything. So this will not read very large. In fact, it's just gone to over now. So for capacitance meters, obviously this has a much higher range. However, the reason I bought this was for the inductance meter in particular, because this doesn't measure inductance at all. So let's have a look at the inductance meter. Let's see how well that works. And then we can check the price of this and then we can come to a very sensible decision. So for capacitors, I would say this seems to actually work better than my other capacitance meter for the low value ones, but it has a big limitation with the highest value you can read. Okay, so bear that in mind, but it did work well within the range it operates. Now let's have a look at the inductors. And I found the English version of the user manual now. So we can have a look to see how low this will read for inductors. Will it read the very small ones? So it tells us that the lowest range, which is the 2 millihenry range, has a resolution of 1 microhenry. Test frequency is 200 hertz, which actually I thought would be higher for inductors. For example, my ESR meter I often use to measure inductors, but I have to do a calculation. But that measurement is very high, 100 kilohertz. So let's see how this works. And will it actually read inductors as low as one micro henry i mean that's the resolution but i'm not sure that would always mean that it will be down to that value but hey let's find out so i have some of these small inductors and various values and they are marked i'm not sure how close tolerance these are we'll start with the one micro henry and see if it will read this so we'll go to the two milli henry range it does mention in the Manual when reading low resistance, use short leads. Well, these are the leads that came with it. So let's try. I will clip the leads as close to the components as I can, at least. Let's see what it does. So we go into there. And that says zero. Let's just take it off there. Yeah, it reads zero. I do have some chunkier short leads on my ESR meter, out of interest, let's try them. See if this makes any difference. This one's a bit dodgy, by the way, anyway. Doesn't fit well in my ESR meter. What do we have? Yeah, again, it reads zero, so it won't read down to one milli henry, although that is the resolution. Let's just go up, so we'll try uh, 1.5. And I'll put the original leads back on. Zero. Let's go up again. So the next value I have is 2.2. .2. And that reads a uh, zero or one, okay. So it's still not reading those. 3.3 .3 is the next that I have. And now it reads it. One or two. So it still struggles to read that. It does see it as an inductor. 
4.7. I knew these would be useful for something when I bought them. Okay. Four. Three. Three, two, three. So it looks like we have to get a bit higher than that. Although we're just starting to read these. 6.8. 4 or 5. So it will read these, but it reads low. Okay. We'll skip the 8.2. Let's go straight for the 10 micro enemies. And now we're getting the reading, which is close. Okay, so 10 micro Henry's seems to be the smallest it will actually read consistently. Uh, we'll go up a factor of 10 now, so 100 micro Henry's. Yeah, now it's reading these quite accurately. So we can see 10 micro Henry's is about the minimum. And the largest one of these I have is 1 milli Henry, which is 1,000 micro henry so we're still on the same range and that's very close i would say and these are not exactly close tolerance i think so yeah from 10 micro enemies up this reads fine i'm not sure if i have any large inductors we can measure that i actually know the value of yeah this one reads 50 but it's not really marked with a reading i can actually decipher this transformer reads 2.7 milli henrys so i have a transformer here i don't know what this should read to be quite honest but uh, that winding which is the secondary reads 20 milli henrys seems reasonable to me primary it has more turns, you'd expect this to read more. Yeah, a lot more. So that is reading about five Henry's. Okay, so much higher. So you would expect that to be a lot more because a lot more turns on the primary of finer wire. Okay. So I would say the inductance meter works well enough. But again, with the limitation, it won't read very small inductors. So you're going to struggle with the little inductors you find on things like motherboards and the VRMs. But there again, to be honest, those inductors don't really fail. So that's a, quite a reasonable tool as long as you don't want to measure very small inductors. And we can see that this is not an expensive item. So 11 euro 64 that's with VAT so I got 21% off that which put this well under 10 euros okay there's actually a capacitance only version if you guys are interested I can test this one this is also very cheap and this one has ranges right up to 20 millifarads that actually looks to me like another version of the one that I have yeah with the off positions at the end I'm sure that's basically the same so it is an inexpensive item. Okay, so I give that a qualified thumbs up. The capacitance range is rather limited, but it did work well with the very low values, better than my other one. So, yeah, fair enough. The inductance range, again, couldn't handle very low value inductors. But there again, very small value inductors don't tend to fail particularly, in my opinion. The sort you find in book regulators, book converters, but then whatever you guys think. And it's inexpensive. So for what it is, I think that is fair enough. However, it would be interesting to try something that's a bit more expensive. To see if it's a bit better. Yeah. Or something that's a lot more expensive to see if it's a lot better. And I'm sure you guys will be into those comments already and saying hey Rich, you should try this or you should try that and if it's feasible i'll do that for you guys okay so let me know down there let me know what you think about this one and i look forward to seeing you all soon again on learning electronics repair ciao for now guys